Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Beatport and Make Your Transition. My name is Paul Nolan for Make Your Transition and today we're going to be delving into the world of techno using the brand new Techno Parallels pack from Z Techno, which is of course an exclusive pack to Beatport Sounds. So if you're into record labels including Drum Code, We Are The Brave, Respect Recordings and Love DJs including Leighton Giordani, Spectre and Adam Bayer, then this pack is going to be absolutely perfect effect for you. So let's waste no more time and get straight into Ableton Live 10 and get this pack into our productions. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to do is add the Techno Parallels pack to our Ableton Live 10 sidebar. Just going to click add folder here and I've navigated to where I've stored the pack on my hard drive. Click open and there you go. So the pack has got a huge amount of content from Apple Loops, which is amazing for you Logic users, right the way through to fully mastered tracks and construction kits, which will give you a lot of inspiration about what's possible with this pack, right the way through to MIDI files, which is something we're going to come on to later on because you can actually take the composition in MIDI of some of the loops that are available in this pack and actually use them in the context of your own synths and plugins, which is a fantastic feature. And then here in the sounds and effects, you've got all the individual drum hits and stabs and chords, etc., which is a great place to start because I've actually made a quite elaborate drum rack here. And what you can see is I've made it up of individual sounds from the pack, which means this is now a custom sound pack, which I can effectively save as a rack, an instrument rack within Ableton, which I can recall at any time. So the great thing about drum racks as well is that it keeps everything in one place and it's all happening under one roof. So you get an individual slot for each sound. So in this case here, it's a kick, or you know I've got a hi-hat here, but you've got them in each individual channel as well, which means I can mix and I can process each individual sound and turn them from the, the basic sounds that you get in the pack, which already sound great, they're production ready, and I'm really starting to make them my own. Another great reason to use a drum rack is that I can actually program the MIDI grooves all in one place. So at a glance here, over the course of this particular eight bar structure, I can see exactly what samples are being triggered where, and even, again, because it's all happening in simplers, I can, you can see here in the case of this percussion, I've detuned this percussion sound three semitones, and I've also gone down a couple of semitones on the kick as well. So I'm just going to play the, the rack itself and the full groove here. So you can hear it's quite a, a mean, quite heavy techno groove, which is coming in about 126 BPM. So I've also dialed in some macro controls here, which means I can do things in the context of an arrangement where I can lift, you can see here, an auto filter. So I can actually lift the, the, the kick and then drop it back down, as you hear in a lot of tracks. I can change the kick pitch here, as well as other controls. So to kind of finally round off on the drums, I've just added another little loop here just to augment, just to give it a bit more shuffle and a bit more atmosphere. So nothing too amazing going on here, just a little bit of side chaining and then a little EQ. And then just the real final touch is again a drum bus plugin, which again you can see here is actually not doing very much at all. But the new drum bus plugin in Ableton 10 is actually quite aggressive and quite heavy handed. So I've dialed the dry wet back to 50% and I've just a touch brought the transients out a little bit. And again, everything else is at zero because even if everything is like this at zero, it will add something to your mixes. So I would very much advise that you play very, very softly and lightly with the drum bus plugin because a little definitely goes a long way. Okay, so in terms of the bass and the track, there's a couple of layers that I can take you through. And the first one is to do with this sort of sub bass rumble that I've got going on. Because traditionally in a lot of this style of techno, which has become popular in the last few years, there isn't really a lot of space for a true bass line to sit, normally because the kicks are so big. So what I've done here is generated this really nice sub bass rumble which you hear in a lot of tracks by artists on drum code and artists like Spectre, for example. So I've actually done it in the drum rack 
And you can see here, I've got a send and return setup within the drum rack. And it's got a really, really big reverb, which is about 18 seconds in length. I've got a little bit of side chaining going on to really tie that quite aggressively to the kick groove. And I've rolled off quite aggressively everything from 273 down and then further EQ'd it. I've got a high pass filter here on 31, which will clear some of the sub bass away to really make the kick sit with this rumble quite nicely. And then on top of that, again, another filter, just really brutally rolling anything else off extraneous above 255 hertz. So let's have a little listen to that because I've just soloed the kick here so we can hear the two of them together. So as that fades away, because it is an incredibly long reverb, you can actually hear it adds a lot of groove and a lot of movement, and it kind of makes it quite groovy, even if you're just listening to a kick, so it sits perfectly. So in the drum rack, you can get to this by the chains view. So you click this little icon here in the middle on the left-hand side of the rack, and you can see it opens up a send and return system. And where it says drop audio effects here, all you'd need to do is add a return chain by right clicking and then dragging your effects into the appropriate send and return chain, if you will. So that now is triggered by the kick, which is sent. And I've got this on a macro here as well, which is really, really convenient. So secondly, I've got one of the loops that I've found, which are really, really loved, which is serving as a bit of a support to other synth lines which I've got, which are going to be more dramatic, which we'll get to in the next few sections. But it's a great sort of bass movement. So you can see I'm just using a one bar loop here. And if you have a quick listen to it, you can hear exactly what I mean. So again, nothing too brilliant going on with the processing, just again, rolling off some of that low end from 46 down, because again, I don't really need a lot of sub bass in this because I've already got the rumble and I've already got the kick as well. And then rolling off using an auto filter, adding a little bit of drive, 3 dBs worth using the MS2 mode. So again, this is a great loop. It's got lots of melodic elements to it. It's got a lot of emotion to it, a lot of drama, which will then unfold as we go through the rest of the tutorial because I'm using other elements to really build off this to create the emotion and the dramatic impact in the track. So in terms of synths within the track, you've just heard me use this bass loop, one bar of this really beautiful 16 bar loop that you get as part of the Techno Parallels pack. And what I've actually done to build on top of it to create more control in the track, but also more emotion and more drama is I've actually navigated to the MIDI files here. And then I've found the equivalent MIDI file, which was used originally to design the loop that you've just heard. So I can just navigate to this now and you can see it's a beautifully programmed MIDI loop or MIDI file, which allows me then to pair this particular melodic idea off onto whatever synth I want. So I've actually used the brand new Wavetable synth within Ableton, which at first glance looks incredibly weird and a bit scary, but it's actually quite a, a simple synth. Uh, it uses, again, wavetables, which are digitally sampled waveforms and the modulation and the change over time that you can achieve with a wavetable synth is part of the reason why you get such complex and such beautiful sounds with it. So let's just have a little listen. Yeah, so you can hear there that it's a really, really beautiful, quite plucky, really bright sound that has a lot of emotion in it due to the, the composition. So this is great because it means then you can get into the individual notes if you so choose. You can do things in the MIDI editor, including, say, for example, you could reverse the entire sequence so you get something very different. Again, it's a completely different riff there. So there's lots of different 
tricks at your disposal here. I've used it in its original configuration though because I just love the emotion in it. And then pairing that off with the one bar loop I'm using, the bass loop here gives stability whilst the wavetable synth can really bring the emotion. So the two of them work beautifully together. So you can hear me as well just tweaking with a few of these macros, uh, changing things like the filter on the wavetable itself. I've also got access to an auto filter here. You can see me move with this macro, which allows me to move the element in and out of the track. And this time element is quite nice because it actually opens out all of the ADSR and envelope generators within Wavetable to allow for a much bigger and much more dramatic sound around breakdowns and builds for, for drops. So the amount of flexibility that you can get by taking an idea that you've heard in one of these packs and then being able to round your own synth sound into these melodic ideas is is truly beautiful and again using these midi files as a starting point for your own compositions is absolutely a way to go so you can see i've got a third channel here the one in blue so this is me now later in the track using the entire 16 bars but i've actually just transposed the original bass loop up an octave so it gives you a much more emotional high-pitched kind of vibe. So yeah, there's a huge amount of rich emotion and texture going on now across these three channels. Finally, on the synths, I just added a very simple stab just to add a bit of groove overall. So you'll hear this now. It's one of those metallic-y sort of FM style, almost like a donk type sound that you hear in a lot of these techno records. And if I just go into the channel, you can see it's a sample, uh, it's a single hit which then means I can load it into a simpler in this case, and I can manipulate things like the ADSR envelope, almost the same way as I would do in a synth. And again, just a little EQ and a little bit of filtering just to make it sit in the mix nice and tight and add to the overall groove. So in terms of effects and rises and sweeps in the track, I am still here in the synth group and I've added a little drone in the background that is going to be a constant thing through the track because i really like the tension and the drama that it brings and the atmospheric element so let's have a quick listen to it now so you can see here just some basic eq just to get that big notch out at around about 445 450 some side chaining and then rolling the filter down so it doesn't get too high frequency and too nasty in the track. I just want it to sort of sit in the background. Finally, just a little bit of auto panning just to get things moving from left to right over the course of eight beats. So in terms of the sweepers now, I've found this lovely sweeper, which is 16 bars long, really, really adds a lot of scale and a lot of drama to my builds because I've got these in the breakdowns here. And I've got two copies, and as you can see, the second copy is an octave lower because I really wanted some low-end reinforcement on this. So we're going to move into the arrangement view now because, as you can probably see, I've been quite busy in the session view sketching out the arrangement. But if I tab over here and then just confirm back to the arrangement, you'll see that I've got the two of them stretched and I've not used the full file here. I've actually stretched over the 16 bars up until this peak. And you'll be able to hear this now if I just play here. There's a bit of a fade up that I've done.
So a nice little fade away there with some reverb and some delay sends. So you'll be able to hear this in context now if I just go to the final breakdown. build up there and obviously when it drops back down it's a really dramatic moment in the track so to finish off with the track let's look at some arrangement tips so i ordinarily like to sketch the arrangement out first in the session view and it allows me to just put my ideas down in a very freeform way and then record all of these eight bar scenes from top to bottom using my push controller straight into the arrangement view. So once I've got the recorded sketch into the arrangement view, I can then automate and I can then add and augment to the shape of the track and then come to the, the final version of the track. So you can see here, I've used a couple of different combinations of automation here using the keyboard and the mouse. So I can say, for example, hit B on the keyboard and then I can draw in some automation here. This is for a reverb send on my synths group. I can then hit B again to come back out to my automation point. I can then click to make a triangle shape. And then if I want to curve that automation, I can hold Option or Alt on the keyboard and I can just drag the line in between two points to get the control that I'm after. So I've also, as sort of a final thing, I like my tracks to sound quite human and quite performed. Hence why I like to use the push to do the automation and to do the arrangement using the scenes. So I've actually put in, you can see a lot of this is stuff that I've recorded in live during the course of recording the track. So I quite like to do this because it gives everything a bit of a natural and a bit more of a human feel. So to finish off, let's listen to the main drop here. I'm going to drop it in halfway through and you'll get an idea of everything moving towards this peak at 105 bars and then dropping quite aggressively back into the groove. So thanks very much for watching and enjoy the final part of this track. Hi guys and thanks once again for watching this Beatport and Make Your Transition tutorial. As an extra thank you and a bonus, we'd like to give you the opportunity to download this Ableton Live 10 session used in the production of this tutorial to give you an insight into how this track was produced. There's a lot more going on underneath the hood than I've been able to cover in the tutorial, so this is going to give you a great insight. All you have to do is drop me a line at transition.studio with your Beatport receipt to show that you've bought the Techno Parallels pack and then we'll get back to you straight away with the download link so you can get hold of this session. Thanks once again for watching and see you soon.